Hi, my name is Carlos Gutierrez. I am um, an executive director of Cinema Tropical and co-programmer, uh, um, along with Cecilia Barrio Nuevo, of Neighboring Scenes, New Latin American Cinema, that is co-presented between Film at Lincoln Center and Cinema Tropical. And we're very thrilled, I'm very thrilled to be in conversation with a wonderful filmmaker from Panama. Um, her name is Ana Elena Tejera, and we're screening her um, the new feature film, Panquiaco, as part of this year's um, edition. And Elena, a great pleasure to, to have you here. Thank you, pleasure to see you again. And congratulations on your uh, wonderful film. Um, it is, um, it is a, a landmark uh, for both Panama, Panamanian cinema, but also, and also Central American cinema. And also, I guess important to mention that it's the first uh, Panamanian film to ever compete in, um, um, to, to ever participate in competition at the Rotterdam Film Festival. So congratulations on that achievement as well. Um, your film is a, it's a very intriguing tale of um, reverse migration of going back to one's roots. And, and, and you make sure um, you mix different elements, different um, narrative elements. Let's start with, um, with um, Cevaldo, with your main character, with your protagonist. Because uh, I know um, the film is largely based on his own story. Can you tell us how you met him and how you decided to make a film about his life? Well, Cevaldo was funny because we met uh, by Facebook. Uh, and uh, we met, uh, I was living in Barcelona and I was uh, searching for some archives and also I, I was studying some um, a traditional oral relates of uh, commu indigenous communities. And I met him uh, by Facebook and we start to sh share a lot of, uh, of things together. We write like letters in Facebook and I decided to, go to, to want to see him in Portugal. And um, we met there. I was, so, I was uh, before with the idea of a film about uh, about this uh, meat of Panquiaco, about also this uh, position of Panama, because I feel that starting this point, this Panama has this geographic position that even is uh, is not an island, but it's an act. It's not an accident geographic. Uh, we don't know uh, even where how to define Panama geologically, and um, it's this way that have a wooden in the earth. And uh, we have this connection of the two oceans in 40 minutes. And I think that this is something very powerful, but at the same time, uh, brings a lot of uh, identity conflicts uh, in um, some things very linked to our story with USA, uh, how Panama was divided uh, for a lot of time uh, in the Panama Canal zone. And I, I was uh, very interested in this topic because I feel myself, I, I have this conflict of no identity. And uh, when I met Cevaldo, um, I have with this idea of this film and and was incredible because uh, the conflicts are not age. Even in that time, I, I was uh, 25, 27, 26, and he has 64. And we have the same feeling and the same conflict uh, of, uh, of don't belong to nothing, but at the same time belong. And in this way, we start to construct a little bit with, with his story, but a little bit also with fiction, uh, this travel of, uh, of this journey to, to go back to the roots, that also the, go back to the roots that are impossible also to, to find. So it was. He went back to. He went back to Panama for good, or he's the. For the movie. No, um, he, he's back in Panama. He's living back in Panama. No, no, he lives in Portugal uh, in mm -hmm. real life. Mm -hmm. He lives in Portugal. Uh, some things of the film are fiction. Some film. Some things are real. But for me, more, or what I'm interested in uh, to work is is to something real. I don't know in. The, we even uh, we are like every time doing fiction of ourselves, but we leave the conflict. The conflict is real. The conflict is documentary, even if the situation uh, is a fiction or not. And this is what what I'm interested to work with uh, with the with the documentary conflicts. Can you elaborate um, 
and tell us more about the myth of Panquiaco, which uh, gives mm -hmm. name to your film, uh, particularly for the people who are not, uh, don't know the, the, the myth of uh, Panquiaco. Um, can you tell us um, a bit more, mm -hmm. and, or can you tell us uh, about it? And, and when did you decide to use it as a frame of reference for the film, kind of a mirroring Sebaldo's stories to this legend? I, I was very interested in this myth because it's a very unknown myth in Panama. Uh, when uh, when the when the, the colonization star uh, was the very big uh, event that was the discovery of the Pacific Ocean for Vasco Núñez de Balboa, and uh, this was a, this is a very political and social and uh, economic uh, important event because this this was the fine of this is the origin of the Panama Canal. And also is the origin of all the colonization of Peru and uh, all the gold of fever. I, I was interested in this event, but uh, I was interested to understand uh, what really happened or what really, I don't know, we don't know, but uh, what, what is the point of view of this jungle? What is the point of view of, of the people uh, who were living there? And uh, I, I find nothing about Panquiaco actually. I only find uh, some songs uh, and some myths. And in a way, I start to build this myth uh, with some uh, shaman in, uh, in, in Panama because we didn't find even the information, but the, what we really know is that he was the person who guided this journey of Pasco Niño de Balboa. And in a way, uh, in this myth, wha what I love is the way of uh, animistic way when they tell the stories of Panquiaco or myths. You know, it's not, it's not, can be animal, can be rock, can be person, can be the sea. And this uh, mix of uh, everything has soul and maybe uh, was the soul of the mountain. Uh, Panquiaco was uh, after transformed in the, in the sea and live there with this nostalgia. I, I was very interesting, but even the meat, uh, I'm trying to don't take uh, archives for, for Spain or archives uh, right from uh, Spanish, uh, uh, Spanish uh, intellectuals. I tried to find like a draws of the indigenous and the way that they tell the story. I found that very uh, intriguing about your film. Um, not only the myth of Panquiaco, but but throughout the film, there's different um, there's different myths and legends that are told mm -hmm. and narrated, uh, even in Portugal when 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 Sebald is in Portugal, but also uh, back in Panama. Um, so um, can you elaborate? Can you talk us uh, tell us about your fascination with myths and legends, but also talking about uh, cinema, also as a kind of a both as a myth um, the constructor, but a myth creator. I think I love myths because uh, because it's it's really we don't know it's true it's not true uh, even uh, it's a projection uh, if we saw the Greek mythology Zeus uh, Poseidon Venus are all all projections of uh, the humans in this moment that project themselves and make these stories and I I feel this is what I love of myths is uh, it's very uh, a projection in other thing, in other, in other uh, human or animal or something that we cannot accept of ourselves, and this is what I love of of the mythology, even of the mythology of uh, of uh, Kunas, uh, that is the community that I work. Um, in a way, all this journey of uh, of uh, Panquiaco of Cevaldo was full of these myths. Uh, like in the moment that they go to the river, um, they take this uh, this bat naked, and uh, in a way, I I, I feel that uh, they mix with the river, and then we lost the sense that it's human and river and human and nature. It's a mix of of these two uh, beings. Um, in this way, I was very very inspired, and I study also with Fernando, who is the other character a lot of this and uh, I was very interested to to use all this recurse uh, in the narrative of the film too and even in the aesthetic and in the sound. We, I work a lot in the sound to 
try to mix these sensations of nature and uh, body uh, movements and uh, try to make a species of mixed stash of uh, beans. Mm. What's also very fascinating about your film is that idea of in-betweenness. Your film is in between fiction, non-fiction, between uh, two seas, uh, you know, two oceans, mm. between two cultures, uh, two countries, Panama, Portugal. So, and you were hinting that uh, it does mirror your own identity quest, you know, you look for, uh, can you elaborate a little more about this kind of idea of in-betweenness uh, as, mm. as a, also as a narrative device? I think also is uh, interesting uh, how the distance of uh, of your country can give you like also this uh, uh, introspection about the country. No, I think I I love this even if some sometimes hurts me more in these times. I feel that hurts me a lot that I can not go to Panama uh, like like before. Uh, but in a way, I, I like this uh, distance uh, of the sea with Panama. Uh, and in a way, what we tried to do with Portugal was to feel that uh, was a distance because uh, we have like concrete distance, but in a way it's a, and also it's a big sea, but this big sea also is full of the sensations that can connect uh, uh, the world of Cevaldo uh, and, and connect us, no? because this is why the water has very importance in the film. We are always uh, feeling water, uh, hearing water. Um, I feel that water, water have this, you know, when we saw, uh, this, when we see the sea, we can see that it's very powerful, but in a way it's very diffusion. And I was trying also to, to feel this energy of uh, something uh, diffusion and strong. You're framing the film from a sort of an indigenous perspective in contraposition to you know, Spanish conqueror or ex mm -hmm. expeditor, uh, Vasco Nunez de Balboa, who, as you say, you know, he was uh, the man who discovered, quote unquote, um, uh, you know, the routes between the two oceans. But you frame it to the Panquiaco um, um, legend uh, about this indigenous kid that actually guided him, guided him. Um, but also your character that goes back to his indigenous roots. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of a central part of your film, you know, going back to your own, um, the construction identity, back to the uh, indigenous population in Panama. Can you elaborate also more in terms of the, how that, um, in terms of the, constru constru um, the construction of national identity within Panama? I feel that in a way, a I feel that uh, even I don't feel that it's only Panquiaco the point. I feel that Cevaldo is not Panquiaco. He's Balboa too, in a way, because when he go back, he's totally strange. Uh, he's, uh, we saw him sometimes with the others. He's not, uh, he's from there, but he al also don't have the same uh, attitudes, uh, the same uh, ways uh, of the people that uh, live all their lives there. And in a way, I feel that he is Balboa and he is Panquiaco. And uh, I feel also this of Panama, we are Balboa, we are Panquiaco, we are all the story that we have with US. Uh, uh, I think this is the point of Panama. Maybe it's the point of what we need to, to try to build in our identity. We are this mestizage of cultures and Maybe it's not one identity. I, I feel in Panama, we are always trying to have one identity and we have this sun and this sun give us this feeling. And in a way, I feel that maybe we are the son of a Chinese people that is very mixed in Panama. We are the son of reggaeton that uh, is the, is came from the all the Antillanos that came to the construction of the canal. You know, even the music in Panama is very powerful because has this uh, mestizaje of cultures to came to the Panama Canal. And uh, maybe this is why in the film, uh, the end is well, Cevaldo, I don't, we don't know if he finds something or not, but maybe it's to say, okay, I'm, I'm everything of this, maybe it's not one identity. Sure. Right, it's just a film talks about the impossibility of going exactly back to the same points that you mm -hmm. left. Know that that throughout these years, also, also uh, Panque and um, Cevaldo was changed in different in different ways, uh, which is also very very intriguing. Kind of a 
kind of, uh, I guess, kind of relates to kind of the, the odyssey, you know, of um, Ulysses trying to go back, but having all this, facing all these challenges to go back to the, the same place. Um, um, can you talk? Can you tell us a little bit more about the the indigenous community in in Wunujala? Uh, how did you get access? Um, what was the entry point to the community? Um, and that interaction with um, Sebaldo directly. Yeah, this community is very, very uh, powerful community. It's one of the communities who has autonomy on, in the territory. That that means that it's a very powerful community. Um, it's complex to work with them also uh, because they they have their cultures, even they have their ways of uh, think about the camera. And they have a word that I love and is the great description of uh, the cinema in a way and photography. The word for called photographer is a uh, Waga Burba guy. And it's a polysemantic word. Waga means uh, foreign, Burba means soul, and guy means a uh, hunter. Hunter, a foreign hunter of souls, no? And in a way, I feel that it's an amazing word to describe what we do. Uh, even, uh, even cinema is always violent. You go with the camera, you put camera in some face of someone in it in intimacy. And for me, in a way, I, I was, uh, for me, it was important to accept that from the beginning and put it in the table, like, okay, uh, we want to do this with you. I want to know in what way you are interested to to see yourself. Uh, we have like a Polaroid camera because it's not frequently that people have photos of them. Even it's not uh, normal to have more now with telephones. But in a way, we are we're trying to uh, talk and say in what way you are interested to be uh, uh, in a camera in a, in in a film. And in this way, uh, I feel that uh, was a lot of work there. I was living there before without camera, without teen. Also, it's the community of Cevaldo. I think this uh, can help, but uh, the system of production was not uh, was not normal system of you no know, films. Uh, sometimes we decide what we do in the day uh, or almost every time because say to someone, Yes, tomorrow at 6 a.m., uh, let's go to this place. And people don't understand the sense of time. It's tomorrow I will wake up. And uh, if this is raining, I, I, I will go to do other things. Uh, they don't think about the, the future. They are in the present all the time. And this is very powerful. At the same time, it's for production. It's adapt, ad, we need to adapt, no? But also some things that uh, we, we were interested to shoot uh, it was not possible and we respect and we try to talk and collaborate with the community a lot. Even we work with the community, you know, people of production was from the community and in a way um, was trying to, 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 to hurt uh, each other. How long did you? How long were you, uh, more or less, in the community? I work. I did. Um, I did a, a short film that was uh, with women there uh, before, and uh, when I was doing the 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 develop, I, I was living there uh, there one month. Uh, then I stay other month, and then we stay in the shooting one month more. Um, was like this. Uh, even the team there, we drink coffee with the community. We try to to have uh, some relationship. Uh, was not like uh, even for me in my films. I think for me it's important that uh, also the the DOP, the sound engineer, have relationship. Uh, not it's not. Uh, I I think it's an ambience. The film. It's a atmosphere. Uh, that we create uh, a more that uh, storyboards and uh, some structures. Well, I'm, I'm not work well with that. Uh, and in a way, this give the space for these uh, persons to start to put uh, their intimacy. No. Sure. In that sense, it seems like the the editing process was very complex. How to bring together all these mm -hmm. different elements that you uh, constructed, no? the fictional, non-fictional, and uh, and like, uh, you know, I was even fascinated, like, like even uh, you have some text on screen, 
um, that's, that's mm -hmm. re really well designed uh, within you know the, the narrative of the film. So um, how do you, how do you work in the editing of a? Of, can you tell about most the complex? <laughs> <laughs> I think was the most complex of the film actually. And um, well, it's my first film. I feel that is my my school. This film, uh, I learned everything <laughs> with with them with with Panchiaco. And in a way, uh, also, I feel that I'm I'm a person with uh, with sen I'm a, I'm I'm not good with words actually. I'm better with the sensations, and sensations need to, to we need to try. And uh, I when I was imagining the film, I was imagining a lot of textures and uh, a lot of feelings, a lot of uh, things that then for translate to camera and sound, uh, we need to we try a lot of things for explore the sensations and uh, in a way I was uh, I was interested to take this story of gift texture for the two oceans uh, you know the Pacific Ocean is more with the, this texture of 60 millimeters and this thing uh, more in the jungle subjective uh, Portugal we have this light uh, different uh, more purple and a different aesthetic. Uh, in Panama, we have something more documentary. And also we have this uh, things that came in Super 8. Um, in a way also, I was interested to this uh, draws of um, how to mix uh, these draws that are also inside in these textures of the, of the songs uh, that they sing. Uh, and uh, was a lot of work of sound too, uh, a lot. Uh, I have the lucky that we do almost all the sound for the film. We do one week for a record sound. Yeah. And um, in a way I was happy also because this give a, like a other sensation, the locations, really exploring the locations of the film. And uh, yeah, it was, uh, was, uh, was a work that I, I, really, I really suffer and love it. <laughs> the two things at the same time oh, also I saw the movie in cinema again uh, in October in uh, Villa du Conde the, in the place that we shoot the film mm -hmm. and I see like wow too, what a, it's too much textures this film I don't want to watch more again it's, it's finished <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah because what's another life make that film but in a way um Yes, I feel that this is difficult how to transmit a lot of sensations uh, with textures. No? In that sense, um, you premiered your film over a year ago at Rotterdam, so we were, as we were mentioning, mm -hmm. and then the pandemic hit uh, exactly a year ago. Um, how did that affect the life of the, of the film, um, for better or for worse, um, that has, in terms of uh, the film reaching in different audiences and, and being screened out there? I think we were we were lucky, very lucky to have the premiere in Rotterdam and see this, the, the, the movie in cinema because after that for a lot of films it was very difficult and I'm glad for that. And I feel that uh, it's obvious that affect the film uh, because also a lot of festivals would not happen. Even of that, the, the film has a lot of uh, journey in festivals and we are happy of that. And um, I feel that for me, what more affect and what makes me more sad is the style of cinema. And even more, of course, for the image, for, for the sound, because uh, I feel that we, we work a lot in, in the sensorial of the sound and, and think the film for, for cinema, <laughs> like everybody thinks here in their films <laughs> and makes sound designs and sound mix and give a lot of energy for this. And I feel that, yeah, this is what, uh, what makes me more sad, but uh, yeah, we will see. <laughs> well, hopefully, yes, as, as theaters are reopening, uh, hopefully we'll get a chance to, mm -hmm. to screen your film uh, in person soon. Um, I know you just premiered uh, an, a new short film at the Berlinale. Congratulations on that as well. And that you're uh, and you're also working on new projects. Um, is there anything that you can tell us about this short and, and your new projects and how also they relate to Panchiaco directly or not? I think uh, I feel that uh, for me, when I start to work in something, and then I continue other is is an evolution no, of that. Uh, is every time is connect the projects and. 
you are always evolution or not evolution. <laughs> but uh, I uh, make uh, last year this film with my grandmother. Uh, that also was a little bit a performance, uh, have some similarities with Pankiako, that is uh, how to, to give her uh, this a scenario of fiction for talk about documentary conflict that was the domestic dictatorship. How is this feeling to live with the militars in the country, but also in the house? And uh, we start to, we did this, uh, this film, uh, trying to to go to the to the skin because uh, the dictatorship in Panama is something complex and I was uh, I was always want uh, with this desire to make film with my family but uh, they don't want to talk uh, also the the photos are with mushrooms the stories are with holes and I asked myself how I can make a film with the characters with the locations, and with the mushrooms, with people who don't want to talk about this. And uh, we make this film uh, as, a, as a way to the bodies have this memory of, uh, of the dictatorship. And uh, I'm, I'm happy that it's premiere also in Berlinale and online. I hope we can see in cinema soon. And uh, I feel that it's evolution of Pankiako because I, I was working in this way of a, of a, of a documentary conflicts that is something that I like. And also I'm working in a new project also in a film that uh, tries also to talk about uh, this geographic uh, wooden of Panama link it uh, with, the, with the Panama Canal, with the fail of the, of the French Canal and also with this uh, big uh, school of Americas that is not well known. But this is a school that started in the 60s in Panama and was the school uh, for the education of a lot of dictators of uh, America Latina and was in Panama. And now it's a very fancy hotel. <laughs> and I'm trying to... <laughs> I am interested, very interested in this topic, military. And, and now I think... Uh, I will focus in that. Also, I was working a performance with the Army of Panama. It's a fragment of, of my film, a love song in Spanish. And uh, maybe I will start to go to, to find this vulnerability in these systems. <laughs> Great. Well, Ana Elena, uh, great pleasure. And uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you. <laughs>